Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for April 1st, 2020. Wow, we're starting a new quarter already. What a dismal month we had last month, and we are shaping up for a beginning to this quarter with an ugly morning setup. So how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle into our nice cozy office chairs, and let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, we have a pretty ugly situation after a very volatile evening in price action. And if you haven't caught the news, you know, the president, um, came out with some pretty dire um, comments yesterday, um, grim comments yesterday. Um, White House health officials are now predicting U.S. death tolls could reach over 100,000, um, even up to as much as 240,000 deaths. And the president mentioned that the next two or three weeks are likely going to be very, very difficult for the country. Um, that certainly didn't, uh, wasn't received all that well by the market, as you might suspect. With our numbers continuing to rise here in the country, it's getting pretty evident that um, no, no action by the FOMC or the federal government is going to buy our way out of this pandemic crisis. Um, as much as they try um, and they keep pouring money into the market, it's not going to solve um, the health crisis that we're seeing here in the United States. The really only thing we can do is um, continue the lockdown to protect spreading the virus around and those kind of things. And obviously that's having massive impacts to business. One of the proofs that these actions are not um, solving our problem is in the mortgage applications. Uh, those mortgage application numbers this morning came in showing a decline of 24%. It's like, wow. Um, even though we have historically low interest rates, folks aren't out shopping for houses um, in a situation where um, they're locked down and more concerned about their food supply and how they're going to make it through the next couple of weeks without income with so many folks uh, being unemployed. And yet this morning, later this morning, we're going to get another a deluge of, of economic data and who knows how that may actually affect the market going forward. One of those being the ADP jobs number, which I think everyone expects will be pretty, pretty grim um, on its face. Um, as of this morning, we have 188,639 infections, over 4,059 people have died which means that the coronavirus is now larger, a larger problem than even the 9-11 attacks on the United States. And if we reach into those 100,000 uh, numbers and death toll, um, this is gonna get pretty serious pretty quickly. And the impacts to companies are gonna be brutal. So the president said the next couple, three weeks are gonna be really rough for the country. And unfortunately, that means we're gonna cover this period of time in here for some really challenging times, likely for the market. And then we enter second quarter earnings season which I don't think too many people are expecting to be um, too rosy. So um, we've got a rough market ahead. One of the things I want to suggest is, uh, particularly the remainder of this week, um, this is going to be a very dangerous and very volatile market as all of these data points continued uh, to come out this week. Um, could be some pretty shocking and even historically significant numbers that could uh, that the market will have to face um, for the remainder of the week. So be very, very careful. Now, having said that, let's take a look at what the technicals of the charts are showing us and 
whether or not um, this is something you even want to be involved in. And yesterday I mentioned how important it was to, to be careful. And it's so easy to get lost in the price action of the chart. I'm good at the Dow, um, the actual Dow index, and just show you if, if I measure... Um, and, and if you look over here on the left side, when I measure this, there will be um, an indication of the numbers. And as you can see, if I measure from the high right here and just measure down to the price support of this little consolidation in here, where we might want to place a stop loss, we're looking at a huge decline on the Dow, 1,200 points. And so we kind of lose perspective in the massive volatility that we see in this market. A 1,200 point shift, how many people have risk tolerance for that kind of thing? Um, and it looks like it. the candles here look pretty, uh, pretty normal, but we kind of forget about the massive volatility that we see in this market. Um, because these candles are so huge and sweeping. And so we have to be very, very careful. Even here on the diamonds from yesterday's high, as I was kind of warning yesterday to be careful, be very careful. You know, we're looking at substantial declines here in the diamonds. We're looking at some very rough price action possibilities. So even though this is showing up as a bit of a consolidation, there was some warning signs here to be very, very careful and not to be buying up the market as we were pressing highs, that we still needed that pullback, that proof of support. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at this morning is we're looking at a gap down. As you can see, the futures are pointing to a gap down in here. We're breaking down through here. Now, that can be a good thing. As bad as that looks, that could be a good thing if the bulls step in here and we find some support. Remember, one of the patterns that we look for, that we need in a market to find a trend, this is not a trend. A trend is only created after we find that higher low price support somewhere in here that we bounce off of. So if we were to pull back in here and bounce off, then we have a successful test of support and a possible trend, and then possibly some good price action can occur. However, one of the typical patterns that we see in the market uh, is that we rally and retest the low to create that W type formation in the market. Another pattern that we could easily see um, with the, the, you know, very grim stuff that the president talked about yesterday, we could easily see a formation that comes in where we actually make a new low and then we have an inverted head and shoulders pattern. So very typical um, bottoming pattern. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, this may not be over yet and more pain may be on its way. So watch that pretty closely and, and think about how you want to trade or even if you want to risk your money in this market. Remember, there is no bravery. I wrote this in the morning blog this morning, but we're having website problems, so I won't be able to post the morning blog. But if... Um, if you were able to read it, what I wrote is there's no bravery. There's no medal for bravery for running into the danger of very highly volatile price action. Um, a very, a very small few can benefit from that volatile price action. And normally it's going to be big institutions, high frequency trading firms that take that advantage in the, um, the volatility that we've seen here. And it's typically not retail traders. There are some very, very skilled, very, very fast um, um, day traders that can take advantage of that. But for the most part, um, retail traders um, are going to come out of that battle with a depleted account or even broken account. So think about that carefully and be really, really careful. There's, there's no metals 
for for racing into harm's way um, into volatile markets like this with such an uncertain path forward. So think about that carefully. Think about those patterns that could form and just be really, really careful on how you approach the market. Let's take a look at the SPY here real quickly. SPY same basic pattern and you can see we're gapping down substantially this morning in the SPY breaking down into these levels now it's possible we could find some price support down in here create that higher low let's wait and see if that occurs or if some of those other patterns that I mentioned um, come into play but be very careful and cautious here and let's remember if we look at our, our technical patterns here in the chart 50 is crossing down through the 200 and um, heading toward that 500 day and on the diamonds we've already we're already getting ready to cross down 50 crossing down through the 500 day technically we're in a pretty difficult situation here in the market if we take a look at the cues the cues has done a really good job and has been the strongest of the indexes and you can see um left behind a little bit of a concerning candle pattern here with that bit of a shooting star unable to quite make it up there toward its 200 day moving average now the critical thing today is will we be able to hold the 500 if we can hold the 500 day moving average as support that's going to be important that pullback could actually set up that buying opportunity if we can hold there with so many data points coming um, over the rest of the week boy it's going to be pretty tough um, pretty tough um, but it's certainly possible and if that does hold we actually then begin the possible upside trend but I would watch that pretty closely because I think there still is that possibility that we seek out um, uh, a retest of this low and who knows maybe even lower over the next few weeks so be very very careful here guys and let's take a look at IWM IWM um, sitting in this little consolidating uh, move but as you can see this morning gapping back down if it can hold this level of support right across here we might be in good shape um, We'll have to wait and see with the jobs data and everything coming out. Um, that may might be wishful thinking. We'll have to we'll have to just keep an eye on that price action and decide after we see uh, if those bulls are going to defend or if they're going to run away scared. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at uh, the VIX. You know, and I've been talking about this on the VIX. How the VIX has been a little bit perplexing in the fact that we rallied so much in the market um, 15 18 plus percent um, in the indexes and we saw very little pullback here um, overall in the VIX and yesterday we did get a little bit of a push down here in the VIX but I suspect this morning um, we're going to see the VIX gapping up maybe up into here maybe even higher and who knows after those jobs numbers what we may see but kind of look for that uh, VIX to start indicating a little bit more fear coming into the market we'll have to keep a close eye on that and be really really careful how you approach this market today it could we're just going to see highly volatile price action as these data points come out um, let's take a look at T2122. Now T2122, I mentioned this um, the other day, it was such a nice relief to see this rallying up here toward that midpoint. And then we got that little bit of pullback in this this morning. I suspect we're going to see that crashing back down into this bullish reversal zone. That can be a good thing. If we can get some levity, if we can get some some good numbers or better than expected numbers in some of these economic data points over the next few days then possibly we find some support down in here and we begin that bounce back up um, off of the floor that would be wonderful I just have to say I can't expect we're going to see a lot of good numbers going forward um, in the next uh, even 30 days it could be pretty pretty rough um, uh, moving forward in the psychology of the market's going to be a little bit rough to overcome um, uh, 
you know all the fear out there from the virus so watch watch carefully let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and this is where we're really going to see some pretty interesting fireworks uh, possibly today we've already got the mortgage applications this morning um, with a decline of 24 um, percent it's like holy cow we we drop interest rates to zero or near zero, and then mortgage applications fall by 24%. Pretty rough um, for the market. Next report out here, 8.15 this morning, 8.15 Eastern time, is going to be that ADP employment report. I don't think anybody is really expecting that to be a good number. The, the only good thing about the ADP report is it tends to miss uh, a lot. It, it tends to be way off from what we actually will see on uh, Friday. But we can probably expect this to be a shocking number. Um, we already saw last week our unemployment number hit 3.2 million um, um, in applications, and ADP is probably going to reflect. Um, um, job creation sinking like a rock. Um, so watch that closely this morning. We then get the PMI manufacturing certainly can move us around a little bit. ISM is going to be much more important if we're starting to see impacts in that ISM number. Construction spending, of course, could be uh, suffering here just a little bit as everyone is being locked down. Who's building a house right now or spending money um, on um, construction spending? Um, unless they're doing their own home improvement. Um, and then the petroleum status number, which, um, you know, um, they're gonna start filling up bathtubs here pretty soon um, because of the glut of oil <laughs> in the market. So I wouldn't expect um, really good results out of that either. So pretty rough day ahead in these uh, numbers. And the rest of the week, we have just so much data coming at us, it's gonna be difficult for the market to um, uh, adapt to those changing conditions here in the market. On the earnings front today, we don't have um, too many companies reporting earnings today, only about 19 companies reporting earnings. And the only real notables that I could come up with would be LW. LW will be reporting this morning. Let's watch that. Again, I'm not, not expecting the market to really even be focused much on earnings reports at this point because everything is about the virus, the, the economic data numbers. So um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I wouldn't expect to get much impact um, out of any of these re reports. And then uh, PVH is the only other one that I could see that has much in the way of notability um, in the market and I suspect very few people are going to notice. So with that everyone, hey couple places, well if you guys could help me out, I, I it's it's hard in markets like this to ask for a favor because I, everybody's just feeling so glum and I, and I understand that. But you know, if we stand aside, if we protect our capital, if we don't jump into this market, if we don't risk our capital and we let the market settle out, if we let the institutions, the big guys, the high frequency trading firms, let's let them sort out the bottom. And if we protect our capital and we wait, there'll be great opportunities when this is over. But we've got quite a distance to go before this is going to be over. So protect yourself, protect your capital. There's no shame in standing aside. But if you guys find these videos to be helpful in, in helping you protect yourself, helping you to decide how you want to approach the market for the day, if you could do me a favor, and that's click that subscribe button on YouTube, and then also click that um, um, bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos and I truly truly appreciate that and and if you feel the video is worthy if you feel it was helpful at all please click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment that helps us continue to to grow um, I want to wish you all a fantastic day I want you to be 
um, very, very careful in what you do. There are some places that you may go to find some relative safety. Um, you know, one of the things that I saw yesterday is uh, some of the gold stocks like Newmont Mining. Um, Newmont Mining was holding up. It did eventually sell off at the end of the day. We could see some moves in gold. We might see some moves in bonds. But I got to tell you guys, um, it's a pretty dangerous market. And if you trade options as I do, it's extremely dangerous with the high implied volatility, the wide bid ask spreads, and the low open interest that you see on a lot of these uh, stocks. So I think today is kind of um, to... Uh, today is going to be a, a crapshoot um, at best um, as we wade through all of these data points. The volatility could be extremely wild, and I don't want to give you the impression that it could be all down. We could get some better than expected numbers and whip back up, but it's still going to be very, very challenging price action. So as I speak um, right now, Dow futures are pointing to a gap down of more than 750 points. Be very careful, everyone. Protect yourself, protect your capital, protect yourself from this virus. Follow the rules, follow the guidelines. Don't think that we're just going to fly right through this. This is going to be a rough process. Everyone take care. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Have a good one, everyone.